Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on today. An honor, I accord very few watches, a reverse thumbnail shot from one of my favorite model families to review from Jaeger LeCoultre, originally launched as you see it here in 2010, the Duomet Acantium Lunaire with the dual wing movement made of Maichot. We have a 42 millimeter rose gold case that includes two separate barrels, two separate drivetrains for two separate purposes. One barrel runs the balance and the escapement alone, the regulator, that is. It has its own barrel. The other barrel runs the time display as well as the complications. The dual wing movement is brilliant, but the watch itself is imposing. So it's important to note this is a 42 millimeter diameter case. It is 13.8 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip, 50.4 millimeters with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. It's a lovely rose gold watch in the size of my old 42 millimeter Duomet chronograph. I owned the white gold chronograph for four years. I loved that watch. And on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it still feels big, but it still feels right. More importantly, it looks right. So if your wrist is my size, 16 centimeters circumference or larger, you can wear the 42 millimeter Duomet. If your wrist is smaller, there's also a 40.5, so keep that in mind. And while the watch has been redesigned broadly for 2024, it was decontented in a lot of ways I don't agree with. So I'll mention some of that as we go through this review. Taking a quick look, and of course the cuff shot, it'll slip under most dress cuffs. Mine would, this will. Taking a look at the strap. High grade, large rectangular scale alligator leather, matte finish, dark brown. There is substantial stuffing or bolstering to give it volume. Monotone stitch, large symmetrical rectangular scale alligator leather, the most expensive cut of the beast. And then we have the monotone stitch along with a edge that is sheer cut and then lacquered for refinement. On the bottom, calf skin. You can see this is a brand new Chachere LeCoult factory strap. No crimping, no gouging. And over time, the Duomet model started to come with pin buckles. But back when it debuted and back in its early days, it was always a folding clasp. And this is Jaeger LeCoultre's first generation double folding clasp. I want to say debuted back in 2006 on their models that included clasps. Rolling around the case, beautifully decorated. You can really see it has a Langa-like case profile with stepped lugs that are handsomely double finished. And you can see... This is old school case making. That's a super sharp break between love and lugging case. And you can see it's double finished with satin and polish. There's a little soft bevel on the edge of the lugs, which are polished in their entirety. These lugs are welded on with evidence of the welded joint removed by hand, filing away the gathered material to create that super sharp break between lug and case. You can see that the pusher for the calendar system has a polished face, a beveled edge, and then it's satinated on its profiles. The case features satin all the way around. You can see there's a double knurling on this crown, which is Duomet specific. And then it also features polish and media blast. Wonderful detail. We have a bezel that is stepped slightly with a vertical plane and then a conical profile. And a dial with a lovely granular finish. I think during the 2010s, JLC began to suffer a bit of brain drain and it lost its direction in the second half of the 2010s. But one thing it did consistently throughout that decade, and it did right, was granular dials with a pebbly sandpaper-like surface. And this is exactly that. Lots to see on this dial. So this is a display that shows you the phase and age of the moon, as well as the date, coaxially, Cantium lunaire, literally a calendar and a moon. And then you see we have these two power reserves that are skeletonized, where you can see the power reserve for the regulator, that's the barrel that powers the balance itself, and then another one, heure, minute, second, Cantium lunaire. This is all of the displays of the watch. And you can see that the finishing here is uncompromising. Even on just the few pieces you can see from the dial side, we have a one-sixth of a second foudrayant, because this is a three hertz watch. And you'll note the use of both the flying second and central second. What happens, because this model was dedicated to chronometry, the first, the chronograph, was dedicated to a chronograph that would run without reduced power reserve or balance amplitude. And it did that with the dual wing twin barrel. Here, you could see 
how I've stopped the foudroyant. You pull it out one stop, then you pull it out a second stop, and that second stop activates zero reset. So this watch, which is designed to run better than a chronometer, allows you to first stop the foudroyant, and then zero reset the second hand. And there is a little hammer that falls on a heart cam, just like a chronograph reset. Now you can see over here, we have a coaxial hour and minute hand on a display of applique quarter Arabic numerals. And then you can see caliber 381. There's a rose gold plate proclaiming it right there. We have a little push adjuster that allows you to quickly adjust the calendar. And then there is an adjuster for the moon phase up at the top. Rolling it over, you can see the movement is made of German silver. Well, it would be called German silver if we were in Germany. It's the same nickel, copper, zinc alloy, the stuff that's used on old pocket watch movements and, fun fact, most guitar frets. And so this is called my show because it's also used in historical Swiss pocket watches. But because we're in Switzerland, we're not going to call it German silver. It is my show. So nickel, copper, zinc, and the copper is what gives it that golden hue. If you've seen the new 2024 Dual Mets, you realize that they've gone back to rhodium-plated brass, basically so JLC can make all of its movements in-house on the same tooling. This stuff requires its own tooling. It's also a little bit harder to work with. It's not harder as a material, but it has more challenges to the careful handling, finishing, and assembly of my short components. Now you can see the parts that are steel because they're silver. So you can see the regulator, the regulator cap, the barrels, the clicks, all those are steel. The watch was inspired by a deadbeat second minute repeating chronometer pocket watch in the JLC factory museum, the Heritage Gallery. And I think that was built on a Victorin Piguet Abouche from the 1880s. And for a long time, JLC didn't really feel confident in the idea of having two different drivetrains with a single traffic cop switching between the two of them alternately. But in the computer era, it was possible to design something like that for series production. And that's how the Duomet was born. The idea here is we have two separate power reserves. One winds while the other ratchets. We have this Grand Sonnerie style click and click spring design. One turns while the other ratchets. You rock the crown back and forth to wind them, and it's actually nice because you can't accidentally overwind them. A manual wind watch with a little bit of protection against the inevitable mistakes. So it's got a 50 hour power reserve. You can see it pivots on 42 joules. We have both polished and blued screws. You can see blued screws here, but then you can also see that there are polished screws. So all screws are finished to a high grade. Some are fired blue, some are polished. And then we have a free sprung balance with the adjustments made using the poising screws on the balance rim. Excellent for precise adjustment, also for shock resistance. We have this sort of sunray motif radiating out across the bridges, Cote de Soleil radiating it out from an imaginary center point atop the balance. You can see there's engine turning on the base plate. The springs feature satination and beveling on their sides. The anglage here is the finest you'll find on any JLC watch priced under $100,000. And you can see satination on the wheels, solarization on the center of the barrels. And then we can actually see the little hammer and the heart cam that fall at the center when you stop the watch, just like that. Lots to love. 50 meters water resistance, surprisingly high for a dress watch, but JLC's always gone a little bit beyond in that regard. And you can see that we have the master 1000 hours control note here. These were adjusted to keep time to no worse than minus one plus six seconds per day. My experience with my chronograph is that they run much better than that. So that is a minimum, not a maximum. They almost all exceed expectations. A beautiful watch, so romantic, rife with history from one of the great manufacturers at its peak in the late Jerome Lambert era of JLC governance. If you love this watch, reach out to Team Also at the 1916company.com for purchase and pricing and availability details.